Tantor here with a recap of Georgia Tech's uh, funeral at the hands of UGA. Uh, this final score was UGA 45, Georgia Tech 0. And rest assured, Kirby Smart took it easy on Georgia Tech today. He treated it more along the lines of an inter-squad scrimmage and basically did nothing except for run vanilla all day long and they didn't do anything to fool us. They just lined up with 11 and went 11 on 11 and slammed it down our throats all game long. But I expected that. Uh, I didn't make the same mistake I did last week, expecting Notre Dame not to be able to cover 17-point spread. I knew Georgia was going to cover the 34.5-point spread, so made a little cash on that. And to be honest, I didn't take my tickets today. I didn't apply for a press pass today and go down there and sit in the press box. I didn't do any of that today because I had just something better that I'd rather do than watch Georgia Tech get destroyed by UGA again. Watch another poorly prepared team play poorly and get destroyed. Uh, the last two games, Notre Dame beat us 55-0. Georgia beat us 45-0. So that's a total in two games of 100 points being scored against our defense and our offense scoring zero. Yes, it's that bad. Let's put it that in perspective. That's horrible. I don't think anybody this year has been beaten that bad. So it's, it's we're gonna do a end of the season recap, but we're gonna wait till after Sunday because Sunday should be a bloodbath when it comes to the coaching staff for Georgia Tech. Uh, I, I know that they can't fire. Uh, Coach Collins, uh, they owe him too much money. When I ask the athletic department about that, I just get a head shake and, and walk off. That's all they do because they can't do anything about it. They know what the problem is. They really do. They're not stupid down there. Um, they're actually pretty smart people. They do treat us right. Uh, they do put together good programs, and the rest of the athletic programs at Georgia Tech are doing very, very well. Take a look at the basketball team. It's a nice watch. Got a good coach there, got good players, good game plans. Hey, they can actually make in-game adjustments. That's amazing, right? So we have programs, just our football program is, is basically a dumpster fire that no one will put out, uh, and they can't because they owe just too much money with that. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. You know, I, I don't want to be really cavalier about having coaches fired because, you know, they are people. Uh, they have families that don't have to be uprooted and leave and everything else. But th they should all really consider uh, another profession because they're not good at this one. Um, and, and somebody really needed to have told them that before now uh, because uh, it might be their dream. But, you know, everybody's dream gets squashed. I wanted to be a lead guitar in a hair metal band. That didn't happen either. That dream got squashed. Hey, it, it was. So these guys, they need to get their dream squashed too. I would let go everybody but uh, Coach Choice and Coach Coleman. Everybody else is gone. Um, I don't know what Georgia Tech's going to do. I, no, everybody, I think, pretty sure is on one-year contracts that's left with the exception of Collins. So uh, they can realistically let go of all the whole staff. I guess they can just keep Collins in his marketing department and, and go from there. Halftime, we'll get into the game. Nothing good happened with Georgia Tech. Uh, UGA had a 24-0 lead at half. Jordan Yates had to start. I, I know people out there banging on that kid. Hey, leave the kid alone. He's a sacrifice. Ain't none of you people on the internet want to get out there and get behind that offensive line facing those monsters that he had to face today, especially the last two weeks. That kid got the crap kicked out of him for two weeks in a row. He's got my support just being brave enough to take a snap. I mean, we had – this is how crap we have. In the third quarter with six minutes left, we had a fourth and nine in Georgia territory. We couldn't get out of the huddle until five seconds left. So we false started five yards back. Whoa. Then – after the penalty, we didn't break the huddle again until six seconds left on the play clock. They had to rush the snap. The snap rolled back to Yates, who took a sack, of course. The whole offensive system is completely disorganized. 
There's no structure to it. The plays are getting in late. We're lucky to break the huddle with five seconds left. It, that is pathetic. Although what it does do, if we're handing off the ball, we should have just took four knees in a row and, and, and just turned it over that way. That way Georgia would have known that we were waving a white flag from the very beginning. Um, but that kid, he stood in there and he took a beating again. So cut him some slack, all right? No one else can do any better. Rest assured, no one else behind that offensive line is going to do any better. Uh, some of our players played hard, and, and one of the guys that really deserves some credit is Mason. He had 83 total yards from scrimmage in, in a game where we only had 171 total yards, and he had about 47% of it. I give him all the credit in the world because he ran hard, he played hard, he attempted to block hard. And that was it. That was probably the only bright spot we had. Like I said, Yates was sacked three times, and he ran for his life the whole game. In contrast, the only bright spot the defense had is that Georgia at the end of the game were taking knees, and they only, they only ran up 463 total yards using three quarterbacks, handing the ball off to multiple running backs. I think they used five running backs carrying the ball. Uh, they could have easily have run it up, but they didn't want to give it. Alabama anything on tape for that SEC championship game and I can't blame Coach Smart because quite frankly playing us I mean yeah we're an FBS school that plays like an FCS school and I always make fun of Kansas Kansas has a better program than we do right now we are pro us in North Carolina are probably the two worst teams in FBS right now two worst programs and at least Mac Brown's a good coach we don't even have that to look forward to. Uh, defensively, it, it's just sad. We start out with a 3-3-5. We switched over to a 4-2-5. That's all our defensive coaches know how to do. They'll run man sometimes. They'll run zone sometimes. But nothing complicated um, with that. It's just, it's just simple uh, concepts that they run. Uh, you can go into Atlanta area and go to any of the 7A schools and watch them play, and you'll see a better offensive game plan and a better defensive game plan. You'll also see better play calling offensively and defensively uh, just at the high school level around Atlanta. Um, so catch some of those playoff games. It's better than what our program has. We finished the season 3-9. and nine. Uh, I called that when we were 3-3 three and three, as bad as our team was and as bad as we were getting out coached. None of this is good. Honestly, like I said, I skipped the funeral today. I didn't feel the need to go and get destroyed, watch us get destroyed. I copped out just like everybody else did there. For those 5,000 people that showed up wearing gold, congratulations. Hey, you guys are, are, are great. Because I was there when we booed Chan Gailey off the field for his final season until they even stopped introducing him. Uh, I'm not hanging around to boo Collins off the field every single week and sit out there and yell and scream at him and, and boo him unmercifully until the athletic department finally comes forward and says, huh, I guess we're going to get rid of him. St start calling us. Start asking for donations to buy out his contract and we'll put together the money, all right? That's a plea. I'll say it next time I'm at a basketball game. I'll go up and I'll tell them, hey, start calling us. Start putting together the money to buy out Collins' contract because this crap's got to go. Um, you know, we're passionate here at the Coach and Crew Show. That's how we're different from everybody else. We're not a bunch of morons from the Northeast that went to Syracuse on a journalism degree that comes down south and covers all these teams telling us how we need to – cheer our teams on. We're not. Everybody at the Coach and Crew Show, we've got connections to our schools. We went there. We're fans, everything else. And we're passionate about our teams, very much so. But we're very, very close at Georgia Tech that the passion's going to turn to apathy. And that's not what you want. You'd rather us to be furious with the athletic department and furious at Collins than to be apathetic at Collins. And right now, I see the anger was last year. This year, it's going more towards apathy. So we'll see what happens on Sunday. Hopefully, there will be some huge changes to the program. And if not, hey, we always have a, another year to lose nine more games. So we'll catch you later. 
after the Sunday bloodbath that should happen. And we'll give our take on the fo uh, follow-up with um, what happened with the athletic department and what our final say-so on how the season went. Catch you guys later.